Jesus had given the church the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Shall we say it one more time? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, what is a key? You see, a key is an instrument for opening doors. When you possess a key, you have the power of access into a house or into a storeroom. As such, keys is an emblem of power and authority. And here we read of Jesus giving the church not just an earthly key, but the keys of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, Jesus has given the church the power and the authority to access heaven. You have the keys that can access into the storehouse of heaven. And one of those powerful keys is the key of prayer. Everybody say prayer. That is why Jesus elaborated in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19. He said, Again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So notice, when they ask, when they pray here on this earth, they have an access into heaven's storehouse. Because prayer is the key of access to heaven's response. That is why in His teaching to the disciples, Jesus kept emphasizing. In Matthew 7, He said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. When you knock on heaven's door, the door will be opened for you. Because prayer is the key that opens heaven's door. You see, consider the church in South Korea. In 1900, Korea had only merely 1% of the population who were Christians. But today, in South Korea, almost 30% of the population are professing Christians. Now, what happened? You see, after World War II and the Korean War, the entire land was totally devastated. Life was very, very harshed. Out of the rubbles, small groups of believers start gathering. They started praying and crying out to God, interceding for the nation. You see, they prayed and prayed for God to give them an open heaven. And then all of a sudden, the heaven broke. Revival took place. People started getting saved by the millions. Today, do you know that three out of the top 10 largest, ch largest churches in the world are found in South Korea alone? The blessings of God came powerfully upon the people. You see, the Korean peninsula it's not a very big place. Their total combined area is smaller than Malaysia. But yet, South Korea is enjoying the blessing and favour of God. They are changing the world. They are changing the kind of cars you drive. They are deciding what kind of cell phones you are using. They are deciding the kind of electronics that we have in our household. So now we use Samsung, LG, Hyundai. In fact, they are deciding the kind of food you eat. That is why we have Korean Wave, right? I mean, years ago when we are growing up, we don't, we, the only fried chicken we have is KFC. But now KFC is sidelined. You go for the Korean fried chicken, right? Why? Because Han Liu, in the last 20 years, has took over the world. We dress their fashion, we sing their song. You see, it took Europe 300 years to be transformed itself from an agriculture country into an industrialized society. It took Japan 100 years to do that. But do you know, it only took South Korea 30 years. They are experiencing an open heaven. 
there seems to be a favor of God, a blessing of God on your life. Now, why is that happening? Because do you know the last 70 years, the South Korean Christians have been praying, praying, praying. They are knocking on heaven's door and heaven is open. Dr. Yonggi Cho says this, prayer is the key to revival. Shall we all say it together? What a great statement. Shall we all say it together? Prayer is the key to revival. You see, in 1858, New York experienced one of the greatest revival ever. Some calls it the layman's prayer revival. Now, why is it called the layman's prayer revival? Because it was not characterized by a famous preacher or a church, but just by ordinary believers like you and I. So won't you turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor that pastor is talking about you right now. (laughs) Ordinary people like us. Now, there was a guy by the name of Jeremiah Lanfear. Now, Lanfear was a successful young businessman in New York City. But moved by the spiritual plight of the lost masses in the city, he decided to give up his business to devote himself to evangelism work. He began to visit homes, distribute Bibles and tracts, and advertise church services. But no one responded to his call. He was so discouraged that the only comfort he can find is in prayer. So it seems that those who pray a lot are those who are most discouraged. I don't know, yeah. But that's what happened to Lanfear, right? So he he is so discouraged, the only thing he can do is to pray. But then he started challenging workers, business people, to set aside their lunchtime rest, to call upon God, and to pray for a spiritual awakening. So for many weeks, Lanfear handed out pamphlets to invite people to come for a prayer service. Then finally, on Wednesday, September 23rd, 1857, shortly before noon, Lanfear opened the doors and waited in the upper room of a church in Manhattan. He waited and waited, but nobody came until around 12.30. He heard the footsteps of a man climbing the stairs. And eventually, a total of six men showed up, and there they started praying. Now, the next Wednesday, 20 people came to pray. By the third week, the prayer meeting was attended by 40 people. The meetings now were so encouraging that the people decided to pray every day, so they would meet daily for prayer. And the agenda was simple. One agenda. The agenda they had was to pray for the salvation of souls. Four months later, in January 1858, 3,000 people came to pray. All three floors of the building were filled with people and they had to turn people away. By March 1858, there were 21 prayer meetings in New York City and six others in Brooklyn held daily. The revival spread all across America and pastors were baptizing 20,000 people every week. One historian estimated between January to April 1858, there were 100,000 converts. In the period from 1858 to 1859, estimated one million people were converted from a population of just less than 30 million. One million people received Christ in two years because the people prayed. The harvest truly is plentiful. Your families are ready to be saved. Your colleagues, your classmates, they are ready to respond to Jesus. But the first thing, therefore, City Harvest, you 
pray. When heaven is open, the reign of the Holy Spirit comes. And when the Holy Spirit comes, where the Spirit of God is, there will be freedom. There will be a conviction. There will be healing. There will be deliverance. There will be salvation. We need an open heaven. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's a promise. God's desire, God's heart is that none should perish, but that all shall be saved. That's why Acts 16.31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. You and your household shall be saved. Let's believe God's city harvest. Let's not give up on our loved ones. Don't give up on your parents. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up praying for your husband or your wife. Because when you believe, you and your household shall be saved. God's desire is that none should perish, but that all should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray. Shall we shout it one last time? Everybody shout, pray. See, last year, this time, one of our pastoral zone, led by MJ, felt led to organize a youth outreach during the March holidays. Now, they want to target the, those students that are in school, but their zone had only 18 secondary school students and 38 tertiary students. Now, they opened the event for registration in the beginning of February last year. However, after a month of publicity, by the end of the month, only three people registered. The leaders, but the leaders, they were dissatisfied. They won't yield. They don't cease urging. They did not stop pressing on. They decided to pray. So they organized themselves into small groups to pray every day. They started fasting every Tuesday for the event. Or even though after a month of publicity, only three contradicting circumstances. They kept inviting now through social media, e-flyers, personal invitation. And you know what? On the day of the event, 133 new friends showed up. They had games together. They sang songs. They shared testimonies of God's goodness in people's life. But halfway during the session, because of the overwhelming number of new friends, the meeting was very hard going. But in the middle of the session, a group of cell group leaders decided to come out of the hall. They went to the back of the hall, gathered there and started praying because they understood the principle. If we can activate the keys of the kingdom of heaven, no matter what circumstances you are in, the heaven may be shut. There may be no rain. The locusts may come. Pestilence may plague us. But if we pray, Heaven will open and our God can respond from heaven. So they started praying and immediately when they prayed, the presence of God came into the meeting. At the end of the event, during the altar call, 46 people give their hearts to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know what? Yesterday is like a one year anniversary of that event. And these guys organized a second part, version two, of that outreach. And yesterday, they are here. Yesterday, they had 83 new friends and 28 people give their hearts to Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
And I want to commend them. Why? Because during the altar call, it was the altar call was given by one of the cell group leader. Not even a full-time church worker. Why? Because I want to tell you, City Harvest, God is not a respecter of person. If only you will learn to pray. If only you learn to call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be healed. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. There is power in your hands.